Andrew Salou. Um, I want to thank all school staff for the amazing work they do day in and day out. I saw this firsthand as a school governor for 20 years during my time as an MP, and I am in awe of what uh, teachers and school support staff do. And they have massively improved the performance of children in England in reading, in math. We have shot up the international league tables, and I think a big thank you to schools for what they have done is the first place to start. I have seen the work that our dedicated teachers do for children with special needs and disabilities in Heathwood Lower School and many other schools. And I've also spent time with voluntary groups like Freddie and Friends in Leighton Buzzard who set out to provide a, self, a, a safe and welcoming place for children with special needs and disabilities. And that time for these children out of school is equally important, and I hope that doesn't get lost in this debate either. Like other local authorities, Central Bedfordshire Council benefited from recent increases in funding for special educational needs and disabilities money, which was very welcome. Despite this, the Council has had to vote a further £5 million of additional funding to balance the books. And just on the issue of fairness, I've looked at the 2023-2024 uh, figures, the DSG funding figures for Central Bedfordshire and for Hampshire, which is a statistical neighbour of Central Bedfordshire. Hampshire gets £5,528 per child, Central Bedfordshire £4,742. That's a £786 difference. If that higher figure is good enough for children in Hampshire, a statistical neighbour of central Bedfordshire, it's good enough for the children which I'm proud to represent. Now, notwithstanding this massive uh, investment on the part of the government, the extra money Central Bedfordshire Council put in, Central Bedfordshire only manages to complete around one in five of its education, health and care plan applications within the statutory time frame. And a number of children with the HCPs, education, health and care plans, are still without a school. And I do wonder what the government does to monitor and enforce local authorities' statutory duties. However, there is a wider problem at play in getting children in my constituency uh, the support they need. Many, probably a majority of the children who go on to need an education, health and care plan, need to see a specialist doctor at our local child development centre, the Edwin Lobo Centre. The waiting list for this centre, which serves my constituents, currently stands at between 65 and 72 weeks. Once the appointment has taken place, there is often a delay of a further four to five weeks for the doctor's report to be received. All this takes place before the 20-week clock starts ticking, which, in four out of five cases, will be missed anyway. This means that children are routinely waiting over two years, either in an inappropriate setting or in a school where there is insufficient funding to properly meet their needs. And for many of the younger children, this can represent a very large proportion of their school lives and leads them uh, missing out on those vital first few years. So it's clear to me what is needed is what we tried to do, I think, back in 2014, a more joined-up approach to special educational needs and disabilities between the Secretary of State for Education and the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care to look at this issue uh, in the round. And when the Minister comes to respond, I would be grateful if he could uh, respond to those points between the difference between uh, local authority uh, funding, uh, those weights in the uh, health uh, system, and what we can do to bridge the gap to get the care that we need for these children uh, on provided on a timely basis.